I think this is recording. Anyway, um, this is a, a dialogue between me and a Muslim who is uh, excellent at uh, ignoring my questions to the point where I get frustrated and near the end even start using the F word. I rarely ever use the F word. So if you can, so he, I want to tell you something. Ever since uh, the attack in Paris and killing all those uh, 114 people and or was it? it was more than that, I think, yeah. And then what just happened in San Bernardino and stuff like that. And we got a blamer, you know, uh, uh, saying it's nothing to do with Islam and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm starting to get a little pissed off. You know what I mean? So anyway, I mean it's it's Islam. You know? it, it's 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 it, you know I, I don't blame the Muslims. I blame the the Quran, mostly Quran nine, 111, 38 and thirty nine that threaten Muslims with a painful doom if they aren't uh, killing and being killed in the cause of Allah. And uh, anyway, uh. This video series is between me and a Muslim who is uh, really good at diversion. But I'm thinking you might learn something in the process of uh, listening to it as I try to uh, get him to talk about uh, uh, Jizya Tax. Uh, I want to tell you about Jizya Tax. Uh, Jizya Tax is what. Uh, a Muslim does to a non-Muslim when they become strong in number. They force non-Muslims to pay a high tax until they totally convert to Islam. If they don't pay the tax, this quote, protection uh, money, uh, then after six months, the non-Muslim can be killed. And uh, says, uh, how's it go? Yeah, they can be killed if they don't pay it. Actually, they, they are to be killed, but a lot of Muslims don't because they, you know, Unless they feel like they're being pushed in it, and then they'll kill them. Under ISIS, it's 85% of what the Christian makes to keep the Muslims from ISIS from killing them in uh, Iraq and Syria. That's how high jizya tax can, jizya tax can be. And um, you'll see me asking over and over again. I say, well, what if it was reversed? What if a group of Muslim or a, gr a group of a, a religious a group called the Musketeers? Mouseketeers came into your Muslim country and slaughtered your people and forced you to pay a high tax until you uh, said there's no, until you said Allah is more than one and that there's no God but Mickey Mouse and Goofy is his messenger. And instead of bowing to Mecca five times a day, you had to bow down five times a day to Mecca. Would you have a problem with that? And do you think this Muslim ever, ever answers me there? No. <laughs> So I will be asking that question over and over again until it just makes you want to vomit. But I won't be, uh, I, I doubt that I'll be doing it because I'll just say, this is when I say what I'll be asking him. Because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it a few times so you know what's coming up. And that way I don't have to keep on reading it over again. Over again. It'll go by faster. And um, also, I, I, also in the series, uh, it will be where I'm talking about, asking him about uh, uh, Sunan Abu Dawah 2020-50, which allows Muslims, actually, and there's also Muslim 83433, which allows Muslims to rape captured married women. And this, he gets, he tries to do everything, try to get around and say, oh, they're widowed and stuff, even though it says married women. Doesn't mention, it doesn't mention being uh, widowed, it mentions being married. And so, uh, he's, I, I just so we talk about that because in uh, ISIS they're raping gr little girls even you know and little uh, Yazidi girls and Christian girls taken away from their parents killing the killing the dad and turning the wife and the the mother and the daughter into sex slaves you know and that's all okay under Islam I've discovered especially in Sunnah Abu Dawud 22050 where the rape. And I say rape because there's no mention of consent. He says, oh, it's consent. We're supposed, we're supposed to be nice to our cups or our tongue possess. And, and I go, oh, really? Really? You go into a country, you go into someone's town, you slaughter the town, uh, except for some couples that survive. 
and you have sex, you, and you're allowed to have intercourse in front of the captured husband, and he's going to let you? Really? Huh. Yeah. Oh, it's consent. Huh. Really? You think he wants you to have sex with your, his, his wife after you slaughtered his friends and family? Really? You know? And of course, but look, Yusuf Ali says you're supposed to be nice to uh, right to possess. Oh, really? Well, it doesn't mean anything because there's this, and of course, ISIS is doing that, you know? And Boko Haram, and Al Shabaab, and all those Muslim th things. So, anyway, that's basically this thing in a nutshell. Now you don't have to see this series. But anyway, I'll, I'll, there's other stuff to it, so I'll, I'll read it here. And it all started off when I was on David Wood's. Uh, that's Act 17 Apologetics, uh, uh, video called uh, Inside the Kaaba. Yeah. And I said this. I said, uh, I wrote a science fiction story where people from, Star from the Star Trek universe went back in time and thought the Kaaba was a small Borg ship. It's called Call Me Jibril. If you are interested in seeing it on Amazon, there it is. And that got the Muslim talking, and he said, he said, okay, yeah, oh, December 11th, reprobate romance is the one that started off saying to me, uh, hey, why are you so obsessed with Islam? Because Islam makes pious Muslims obsessed with pleasing a being that boasts of being the best of deceivers to the point where not even average Muslims can live in peace. That's why. And that then the other Muslim jumped in and he goes by some Muslim words, which if you translate it, it says hi. But I call him hello in this thing. And then, so, he says this. He says, the verse from the Quran you're referring to is referring to God deceiving the bad people and plotting against them like how the bad people were plotting against the Prophet and his disciples. How did they become bad people? You know, how did, how did they become bad people? Because they plotted against the Muslims after they had a verbal agreement with the Muslims. What verbal agreement was that? The Jews in Medina plotted against the Muslims after they had a verbal agreement, and this was perf was prefer this was performing treachery, and they planned with the Meccans, and God divided them, uh, God deceived them from their plan, and their plan was spoiled. The so oh, now read okay I took that apart but I forgot to remove it so. In, the Jews in Medina plotted against the Muslims after they had a verbal agreement and this was performing treachery. What verbal agreement? A verbal agreement that they become Muslim so they wouldn't have to pay jizya tax, which is a high tax until a Muslim, until a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim. Then they just pay the cut. That's Quran nine twenty nine where you're forced to where you where the Muslims are supposed to fight actually kill non-Muslims until uh, the non-Muslim. Uh, uh, Phil Subdued plays jizz attacks with willing submission. So, oh, what, what verbal agreement? Uh, verbal agreement that they'd become Muslim so they wouldn't have to pay uh, a high jizz tax? It's Quran 929. And they planned with the Meccans, and God deceived them from their plan, and their plan was spoiled. Their plan was to stop Muslims from forcing them to pay jizya tax, true? No! In the verbal agreement, they weren't forced to pay anything. They weren't forced to pay jizya at that time. Hmm, at that time, hmm. If not, why, why did they uh, try to fight the Muslims? Seems that being forced to pay jizya tax, uh, that's Quran 929, is the only reason why one would uh, fight Muslims. Muslims have to pay a tax more than jizya called zakah. Jizya is, however, much you want to give. Where in the Quran or Hadith does it say jizya is what the non-Muslims will give his own price to and have it lower than what a Muslim is forced to pay in zakat tax. 
Scripture from the Quran or same from the Hadith, please. Yeah, where, where, where is in the Quran or Hadith where the jizya tax is the same or lower than zakat? You know something? He never provides the answer because it's always higher than, was, than a Muslim is forced to pay in zakat. And they are forced. If a Muslim doesn't pay zakat, he's, thought of, he's considered out of Islam. And when Muhammad said, he who changes his religion, Islam, kill him. So he has to pay zakat. Yeah. Muslims have to pay a tax more than jizya called zakat. Jizya is however much you want to give. Where in the Quran or Hadith does it say jizya is what the non-Muslim will give his own price to and, and have it lower than what a Muslim is forced to pay in t zakat tax? Scripture from the Quran or saying from the Hadith, please. Uh, jizya is exempted from the, un from, from the wealthy. Jizya is exempted from the unwealthy and old. In other words, from the poor and old. But then later on, he contradicts it by showing that even the poor have to pay jizya. Right, I got right. For the unwealthy are already debased, and the old can't work to make money for the Muslim. Thus, what are you as a Muslim to do to the poor old man who is not a Muslim? Again, where in the Quran or Hadith does it say jizya is what the non-Muslim will give his own price to and have it lower than what a Muslim is forced to pay in zakat tax? Scripture from the Quran or saying from the Hadith, please. Yeah. Zakat is uh, from everybody and uh, and it's at the least 2.5 of your salary. Jizya is dealt by their own com community leaders, not the government. Oh, by the community leaders. If so, then what did you mean when you said Jizya is however much you want to give? Was that Takia, line for Allah, on your part to say that? Jizya is... Uh, for that certain majority group. What? Uh, that certain minority group. What minority group? It can not be used on others. What others? Who are those others uh, able to not have to pay a high jizya tax for not completely submitting to Muhammad? I, I mean, Allah. Who are those lucky others, please? Uh, well, zakah is for the improvement of of non-Muslims and Muslims. Oh, Zakka is for the improvement of non-Muslims. How does it improve non-Muslims? Do you think he ever answers? No. <laughs> Quran verse is not referring to Medina. Where did I mention where did I mention Medina? Uh he's, he called it Medina instead of Medina. Uh, it was referring to the pagan Meccans. So that so that, so that had no correlation, and that verse was revealed at the treachery act done by the Jews. Is there anything, you know, is there anything a Jew does in Islam that is not uh, treacherous? If that Jew isn't paying jizya tax, you know, seems like the Jews do everything bad, according to Muslims, in Islam. At the treachery act done by the Jews, so there is no correlation between that verse and the Jews in Medina and, and Mad because it Medina Medina. What were you talking about again? Is there anything in Islam a Jew does that isn't seen as treachery if he or she is not paying jizya tax? The verse was speaking about the pagan Meccans. Pagan Meccans doing what? I gotta stop it here. Bye. Let's see here. So we'll stop it here.